greetings once again to my fellow centaurs and sea creatures of the Commonwealth. We are here today to take a look at some of the new environment controls introduced with ENB 0.307 for Fallout 4, and how these can be used with the existing sky and time of day parameters to customize the appearance of the day and night cycle in your own game. I will also go over some basic configuration tips to help you get started. For details on the new ambient occlusion and indirect lighting effects that were also added with ENB 0.307, please see my previous video here. So, without further ado, let's go! Part 1. Environment Parameters Effect Overview ENB's new environment controls allow for manipulation of direct and ambient lighting parameters. Different settings can be specified for each time of day, so these will take effect automatically as time passes. Color filters are also supplied, which allow for features such as warmer colored light during the day and cooler colored light at night. When combined with ENB's existing sky parameters, the new environment controls provide us with the means to truly define the overall lighting characteristics of almost any scene. Part 2. Setup and Configuration Unlike most of ENB's other effects, the new environment controls cannot be toggled on and off. Instead, these parameters are always in effect, but at their default values, they impart no change to the game image. And, also unlike most ENB effects, the environment controls have virtually no impact on game performance, so feel free to tweak away with reckless abandon. Woohoo! Okay, to configure these new controls, as always we will open up our in-game ENB menu by hitting Shift Enter. And let's go ahead and minimize the shader parameters and ENB series panels to make some room. Here in the ENB series.ini panel, we will want to scroll down to the new environment section. As you can see, we have quite a few new parameters here, including some color filters in these collapsible sections. In reality, however, there are only four new unique parameters, and these are all repeated for each time of day segment, as shown here. If we jump up to the statistics section of the interface, we can see ENB's time of day tracking statistics. And in this midday scene, you can see that the day factor is 1.0, while all others are at zero. As such, only changes to the day related parameters will have any effect in this scene. The very first parameter in the environment section is ignore weather system. You should leave this checked for now, as ENB for Fallout 4 does not yet include a weather system. The first real set of parameters we have here are for direct lighting intensity, and these parameters correspond directly to sunlight during daytime scenes and to moonlight during nighttime scenes. Note that as I drop the direct lighting intensity day value to zero, all directional light is removed from the scene, though ambient lighting allows for things to remain visible. Now, if we also set ambient lighting intensity day to zero, the entire scene becomes completely unlit. All that remains visible is the sky and some volumetric lighting effects. Let's take a quick stroll through this spooky world. Yikes! In general, the direct and ambient lighting values should be balanced to achieve the desired overall visual effect for each time of day. Color filters may also be applied to direct lighting to make sunshine have a warmer tone, for example, or moonlight, a cooler tone. Here we have an orange tint applied to sunlight during the day, and here you can see a bit of blue being applied to the moonlight at night. Now, we can also go for a more stylized look by boosting direct lighting while killing all ambient light. This results in a high contrast game image with very dark shadows. Sort of a noir look. Um, but with color. However, by using ENB's color correction tools, we can easily remove color from the image to achieve a more authentic noir aesthetic. You can check out my video about ENB's color correction tools for details. The environment section also includes a set of parameters for direct lighting desaturation, though these controls presently seem to have little effect on the game image, even if a color filter has been applied for the corresponding time of day. Perhaps these will become more useful in a future ENB release. Looking again at the ENB menu, we can see that we also have direct and ambient lighting parameters for interior scenes, both for day and night. Now, since direct lighting refers only to sunlight and moonlight, 
These parameters generally have no effect in game interiors, though it's possible there are some exceptions. Ambient lighting controls, on the other hand, behave as expected. Additional ENB controls for point lighting and fog will be required before interior lighting can really be fully configured. So, as of ENB 0.307, Direct light intensities, direct light color filters, and ambient light intensities are the only functional parameters available in the environment section. Hopefully Boris will include additional environment features in future releases of ENB for Fallout 4, as he has previously done for games like Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto V, and Fallout New Vegas. In any case, it's also important to understand how these new environment parameters work with ENB's existing time of day feature. As mentioned earlier, the lighting parameters for each time of day can be specified independently, so that the game will automatically interpolate between these settings throughout the course of the day. In the statistics section of the ENB series.ini panel, we can watch these numbers change with the passage of time. ENB's existing sky parameters are also governed by the time of day function. While using the environment and sky parameters together gives us tremendous control over the lighting of outdoor scenes throughout the day, there are some limitations to be aware of. For example, these settings are not weather specific, so settings that look great in clear weather may look strange during a radiation storm or on a foggy day. Note in this scene how the brighter and warmer sunlight can feel inconsistent with the overcast weather. Also, as mentioned earlier, since ENB does not yet provide controls for fog attributes and point lighting, these elements can sometimes interfere with the visual balance of the scene. Note the bright fog in these nighttime scenes in spite of the darkened lighting. Hopefully it's simply a matter of time before these features are also in place. Okay, now that we have some understanding of the available tools, let's take a look at a few comparison shots and time-lapse scenes from the Commonwealth. And as we take a look at these, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of you viewers and subscribers to my channel. I recently hit the 1500 subscriber mark, and I'll be making a short video to celebrate this milestone. Also, please leave a comment to let me know what other topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. Alright folks, as always, I want to thank you for joining me. Please give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful, and be sure to stay tuned for more updates about ENB and other visual and performance mods for Fallout 4. Catch you next time.